point. So this type of fake door website was great for physical products, but how would you construct the message that you want after a user buys something that is a, a digital product? What, what kind of digital bar product, for example? Like an app. Like an app? Um, do you have like fake download? I, I don't know how do you count app performance, like download page? Like something like, let's see. Something like this. Yeah. Would I count? Yeah. I mean, they can, they can click and then you would just provide a feedback for them later, right? Or, or are you asking for a discount? Yeah, so, so definitely the first thing is, um, like the message I typically do is, we will not charge your card until the product is available. That is, and you can also consult with your lawyer, but I think that is That's like, what I'm getting at. yeah. Yeah, and and before you actually charge them, that's like the very bottom line that you, you are reaching the, the the boundary of like the law. So, yeah, at, in all of my exercise, I I don't actually charge them, but I'll let them feel like it's charging them. Yeah, even you can even so in this exercise, since I didn't leave their credit card number because I I just don't want to deal with that gray area of the legal thing. But some of my star friends they actually do credit card number but don't charge. So just charge them like two weeks before the product will ship. Yeah, that also works. Do you teach people to do this whole thing? <laughs> well I I don't know. I I learned this by by years, but so I don't know how to. How, how many of us would pay for someone that you have taught to do this? How, don't pay MVP for it. Okay, okay. How about this? How much would you pay for a, one MVP? One MVP. So start with five hundred dollars. Yeah. So I, I don't think that because. That's marketing to my actually. Yeah. I, th I think. Oh, sorry, sorry, no. I, I think <laughs> this typically. So I can tell you a lot of details. If you if you want a professional marketing team to help you to buy the advertise and to fine tune it, like digital marketers, not in the U.S. like in other countries, the cheapest I can find so far is eighteen hundred dollar per month, just advertisement. The website you can find someone to do probably like fifteen hundred dollars as well, that like the whole design and this kind of details. Yeah, that's, that's classic. Yeah, of course. So it's not <laughs> trying to find anyone with the right mindset and the technical capabilities. There are a lot of people who pay for that. It's pretty simple. Maybe I think not as cheap as that. For, yeah, I'm trying to find the same. So this is why we need entrepreneurs, yeah. <laughs> right? I, I don't know what kind of job title fits in in this category. MVP builders. MVP builders. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that can be your next start. <laughs> <laughs> so I have for one more question. Yeah, sure. Go for it. So I was going to ask, what do you see as the future of uh, design in 15 years, and what will you be doing in, in 15 years? Well, 15 years. <laughs> so, so I think, so let's, I, I'm from hardware, and I spent more than 10 years in hardware, but I'm, I'm feeling that 
there's no way to compete hardware in, or so hardware includes a lot of design because design is like one of the cru crucial things in hardware. So I don't feel like there's any chance that any other country can beat China in hardware. <laughs> I bought this scale, like a, like a scale you can monitor your, your weight for my wife and then just kind of just for fun and then you can have this app to monitor your weight, your weight and every details. Two years ago, it was like $2.99 from iHealth in, from California. Now it's only $49 from, from a China company. The app is very, very legit. It's like $39 now, okay, yeah, it's like, it's a lot cheaper. So, so from hardware side, I don't feel like I'm going to do, I don't feel like I'm, like hardware is a good competitive anymore. Maybe another five years, Apple still have this like advantage, but then five years, 10 years later, they'll be like almost the same. And yeah, that's like, so for myself, to answer your second question, I, I don't think I will spend more time on hardware. I'm going to do more automation and robotics stuff. So, so for example, like how to automate the MVP build process, <laughs> right? Or like, one of the projects I'm trying to do is um, how to start creating stores with no human in, in it, like Boba tea stores or like frozen yogurt stores or like uh, Chipotle, Subway, this kind of stuff. So actually I'm working on a product that actually will replace 80% of the labor in every store. And this kind of, it's a more complex product, not just the hardware, but hardware plus robotics plus design plus like everything together. It's more complex. You can call it AI as well, but so that's what I feel. But for design, there's definitely more HMI design and UI UX design phase because all these are like HMI design. So even for robot, the interaction with robot is very challenging. And for any products, like an app or a, a digital product, you always need the 2D design, like UI UX. So that's what I feel for design. I feel like the hardware will be very good there. So, and I, I don't know, for hardware design, like I try to design, I, I try to design IoT products before and there's nothing too much to change. Let's say when you see, so this year we have like, Apple have their HomePod, right? And Google have their Google, whatever, Home stuff, Amazon. All of them are very similar. Even with Apple, it's just gonna be like a fancy egg, right? It's not too much different. That is not where design adds the most value at. I think design is more like the process, how you actually validate a feature or what people actually want. The ergonomic and uh, you know, the, the secret or the, the magic in design still exists, but that level of existence only happen with like only one or two designers in the whole planet. So like Johnny Ive, he, he could know like what's going on on iPhone, but like I know Johnny Ives' um, manager, so his name is Robert. He has his own design studio in San Francisco. So this guy, he actually, when you look at his design, he designed Beats. He designed the the Lyft logo. When you look at his design, you, you can feel like the powerful, like the you know you can feel the force in it, but. <laughs> But other than that kind of level of masterpiece design, most of the designers are like just, you know, laying out stuff and <laughs> try to make things clean. So that's how I feel in design, unless someone get to a point more than 30 years of experience, they become like the master master. Otherwise, uh, it's not very easy to get difference. Like even at Tesla, there's only one key industrial designers will call every style, even with website, products, cars, battery power walls, that kind of stuff. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs>